Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, this is it, part number two. Yeah, part number two of the Williams Robotron kind of repair series, power supply, rebuild, replace kind of thing. <laughs> yeah guys, by the end of this video, we better be playing some Robotron. I am not kidding, because right now we have three games down, right? iRobot's down, Robotron's down, and Firefox is down. By the end of this video, this better be fixed. <laughs> so, all right, let's go over here. And also, by the way, my big raffle has ended. I, I picked the winners. I contacted all you guys. Uh, mostly everyone has replied back to me except for a couple. But anyway, our big raffle is over. I'll be mailing out those prizes this week. We gave away uh, an NES uh, Classic Edition. That was actually second place. Uh, first prize was a Famicom Mini Classic Edition with a portable monitor. And then second place was the NES uh, Classic with a, a wireless controller and an extension cable, and then some t-shirts and CDs and stuff like that. So be sure to check your emails. Actually, I'll kind of rattle off the winners here really quick. Uh, first place was Justin L, and actually Justin won the raffle last time. I swear to God, this guy has won the raffle two times in a row. The last time we did a raffle was the John's Arcade prize package, which I think was some iankellogg.com uh, John's Arcade branded cap kits and t-shirts and stuff, and Justin won that, and he also won this raffle. He won the grand prize, the Famicom Mini, and the portable monitor that's Famicom theme, and then second place was Romeo S, uh, which was the NES Classic Edition with the Nyko controller, and then third is David, and then Jason, then Jason W, then Anthony S, then David H, then John M, then Brian H, and then Roger R. So if this sounds like you, make sure you check your email. I, I emailed everybody over the weekend, and actually, Almost everyone has responded so so far. Maybe a couple have not. So, anyway, all right. What are we doing in this video? And by the way, thanks for entering the raffle, and, and congrats to those that won. And now I gotta mail that stuff. <laughs> not looking forward to it. I hate mailing stuff. So I'll try to get that stuff out within. Give me a, give me a good week here, okay? <laughs> I'll ship it soon. All right, all right. What are we doing in this video? So Robotron is down. It's still down. It's driving me crazy. The last video. We um, replaced the header pins on the power supply, hoping that was going to fix it. And, and really, I guess it was a hunch I had that the problem was, was the top header pins. Because in a previous video, months ago, we replaced the lower header pins, and that fixed the game. And then it started acting up again, okay? So we were, I, I thought for sure it was the top ones, because when we, when we wiggled it, I can kind of get the game to come to life. Well, it didn't fix it, okay? We replaced the header pins, we, we replaced the little Molex connector, it didn't fix the problem. Robotron is still down. Now, at the end of the last video, we did test the voltages, and I probably should have did this in the very, very, very beginning, but I thought I, I was physically seeing something happen, and anyway, we, we tested the voltages at the power supply, and we were only getting 4.5 volts coming out of the power supply. So, it seems to me that we need to maybe rebuild the power supply, okay? And I actually talked to Ian, and he was going to send me all the parts. Well, at the end of the day, they didn't show up in time for this video, okay? So I don't have any parts to rebuild that power supply. However, what I do have is this, okay? And I suppose we can do this in this video. And, and also, I, I want to do a little more testing behind there just to make sure it is the power supply. But we'll find out quick enough if it's the power supply if we put this on there and this, okay? So from Arcade Shop, I ordered uh, one of their Williams power supply adapters, okay? And, and it's nothing more than this thing right here, okay? And this basically just screws into a, a, a standard switching power supply, which we have right here, a HAP one. And actually, after the last video, I got a lot of comments and emails from a lot of people saying, John, just stop messing around with the linear power supply. Just put one of these in there and be done with it. I did it in my game and everything's great, okay? Now, there's some people that say that these things are not good, okay? Because I guess, and also like iRobot has the same problem, right? Because a lot of these games, when they're shutting down, they have like these reset circuits or capacitors that kind of keep the voltage alive during shutdown, okay, so that the game could save its settings and scores, okay? And so I, I guess that with this switching power supply adapter, we, won, we, we run the risk of losing scores. So I don't know if it's going to happen. Time will tell. 
Um, I still plan on rebuilding that power supply, but I thought for this video, since I have this right here, that we install this and, and see what happens. And this is really gonna tell us if the problem I have is the power supply. <laughs> so, so here's what you get in the kit. It's like $35 or something. You, you get this power supply, which is your standard Suzo HAP, okay? Uh, you know, it's got five volts, uh, negative five and, and positive 12 output, okay? And all you do is you take this adapter here and you line it up and actually, is this stuff not labeled? Wait a second. Oh, no, it is. Okay. So you see these little fingers here? They're labeled. This first one is minus 12. The next one is minus 5. Then it's ground, ground, and then positive 5. Okay? And what you're supposed to do is basically just line it up on here and screw this on. And then we take our, our, our Molex from the original harness and just plug it into this and we're done, okay? And you can see that we plug in J3 and also J2 into, into this harness here. So let's go ahead and, and kind of get this set up. Now, we're just gonna set it up over here and then we'll install it in the game. And, and really, this is really quick and easy. All you do is you take these little quick connectors here and grab your AC voltage, feed it into the power supply like here, and then and then just plug the connectors into this and you're done. So it's it's really quick and painful. And I've used these kind of adapters many times before. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and and they're good. You know, I think I have one in my uh, my Zookeeper as well. All right, so we're gonna loosen these up. And I also I think I installed one of these in my. Moon Patrol a long time ago. All right, so we're gonna loosen the screws on the top here. Everything up to the 12 volts. Okay. So I loosened uh, positive five, ground, ground, negative five, positive 12, and, and that's it, okay? And then we're gonna come in here and just line this up and stick these things underneath here. All right, so it has to go on like this. Let's just double check. Five, ground, ground, minus five, 12. And then on the board, plus five, ground, ground, minus five, 12. All right, so we're just gonna kinda get those things underneath there. And just tighten it down, and that's, that's really it. Okay, it's on, okay? So that's that. So now we gotta get AC power to it and we'll go over to the cabinet and do that real quick. And then if this works, we'll screw it down as well. All right, let's go over to the game here. Um, so I'm gonna move the game into a position so we can work on it and then we'll continue. Okay, we have the Robotron opened up here. So we need to figure out a place to grab voltage from, okay? Um, and I think we'll just grab it right here on the monitor, okay? We have isolated, it's, I don't think it matters if it's isolated, I've done this before. So I think we'll just tap in right here, okay? And again, it comes with these little, quick little connectors here. Let me grab my pliers. You know, this is gonna take like a minute to do, by the way. <laughs> if this fixes the game, we're gonna be done really quick in this video. I guess this is a lot faster than, than rebuilding, huh? But I guess the caveat here is, uh, is it gonna keep my scores? Is it gonna save settings, you know? All right, so we're gonna take these little quick connectors and the wire on them is actually pretty short, huh? It's really short. Uh, so let's think about where we wanna grab power then. Uh, on the bottom of the cabinet? I really want to grab it on that monitor power. So the power supply, I guess we're gonna mount it probably somewhere. Shoot, we could put it right there. So it, it's gonna have to reach um, this, right? So it's gonna have to go kind of down here. So it's gonna go like that. And then the other connector, it's gonna be J3, which is this one, which I think is the coin doors and stuff. So it's gonna go like that, all right? So we're gonna have to mount it like somewhere around here. Okay. So that means that our wires need to be able to reach 
So this is the AC right here. Now on my, uh, I think it was Moon Patrol, the, the previous owner, and I wanna show you guys this, and you really shouldn't do this, okay? On my, on my Moon Patrol, the, the switching power supply was right here, it was plugged into this service switch. You see down here this service outlet, okay? You find them on the bottom of most games, especially on the Williams games. You really don't want to get your AC from there. As tempting as it is, as easy as it is, to just take like an extension cord and cut it, right? And then take those wires and put them on the power supply. The problem with putting it down there is that when the game is off, that's still on, okay? And so you turn the game off, the monitor goes off, the marquee light goes off, the coin door lights go off, everything looks like it's off. However, the power supply is still running and the game PCB is still running because that switch on the bottom is not, it is always on. It's not controlled by the switch in the game. So you really don't ever want to do that. Um, now for me, it was okay because I turned all the games off. I turned all the power off in the basement. So I just kind of left it, but the previous owner did that. And it's really dangerous too because you think the game is off and you go to work on it and, and then you realize all of a sudden, oh my God, it's still on. And, and, and it's kind of a little spooky because you start unplugging things and then you realize the game is on still. So just be aware of that and be careful about that if, if someone uses that for the power. All right, so let's see here. So we got enough slack in the wires here to do this. This isn't the most elegant way, isn't it? It totally will work, though. I'm just wondering if get some zip strip zip ties. All right, so I'm just trying to figure out here where we want to grab the power. I'm still leaning towards this because it's the easiest. Um, we could figure out where the 110 is coming out down here and solder it to the transformer. It seems kind of unnecessary though, honestly. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab it right here. It, it's, it's just staring me in the face. <laughs> it's easy, it's quick. And then we'll neaten it up with some zip ties when we're done. All right, so here's what you do. All right, you, you put the wire in here, okay? Just like so, in the empty slot, right? And then you take this thing here and you close it. And then you take your pliers and you just kind of, let me get my big channel locks a little more effective. And then all we got to do there is just compress that down. All right, so I'm gonna take my channel lock, some big pliers here, and we're just gonna squeeze that down. Okay, just like so, okay? And these are, I guess, uh, insulation displacement connectors, the kind that we usually try to remove on these games. <laughs> so this one's all compressed, all right, here we go. All right, so let's open this up and let's grab the other wire. <sighs> Just kind of open this thing up. All right. You know, it's funny, a lot of people just say, forget the linear power supplies, just put in a switcher and be done with it. And I always like to try to keep the old ones working because I've had good luck with them after you rebuild them. Okay, so there we go, we got our AC. So I really kind of wanted to try to get the original one working, but you know, hopefully what we're doing right here fixes this. Again, also I do want to tell you that a friend of mine, uh, Jeff, who is a really longtime collector, he told me that the, he thought the problem was over here, okay? He thought that maybe this connector and these headers had a problem, 
but I said, yeah, but I'm only getting 4.5 at the power supply, so the voltage drop is happening on that side, so I kind of think it's the power supply, but anyway, this is something to look out for too, is replacing all these power connectors on the boards. These can really drop the voltage down. And, and by the way, mine has the, the voltage, uh, the minus five wires cut here because someone installed the, the 4164 RAM in mine. So mine's got the mod that replaces the old 4116 RAM that required more voltages and installed the more reliable 4164s, which is actually great. So, all right, continuing on here, let's, let's hook the power up to the power supply. And it's just really these two spade connectors that go to the AC. I'm actually gonna unplug this right now because I wanna test the voltage before we plug the game board in. All right, so let's run these over here to... Okay, so the... God darn it, this stupid thing covers the whole thing up. All right, so it's the last two here. Huh, these connectors are really wide. Weird. So the spade connectors that are on here are super wide. All right, so let's go ahead and loosen this up and slide our AC in. And again, you, you know, you guys got to make sure the game is off when you do this, because this, this would, you'd be getting shocked right now. What is with these stupid spade connectors? The connectors they put on here are just like way fatter than where they're supposed to go. What the heck? Look at these. What kind of connectors are these? This is garbage. Look at it. It just doesn't want to go on here. I guess if you hook it underneath. Boy, that is... Something's not right there. Come on, arcade shop. You got to fix that. <laughs> Don't you test it? All right, all right, it goes in, but man, that was too tight of a fit. So it's got like a little hook on it. You see that? And you kind of got to go underneath, hook it, and then go. I guess that's for safety so it doesn't come out as easy. But it feels like the connector itself is just too wide for this slot. All right, there we go. We got it in. All right, it works. I just don't remember it being that hard to get in. All right, so our AC's on. Okay. All right. I'm just going to double check here. All right, so we're all set here now. So let me grab my multimeter. We're gonna test the five volts before we plug the board in, okay? So we're gonna plug the game in, test the voltages, make sure you know they're within a reasonable range, and then we'll plug the logic board in before we fry anything. So, all right, let me plug the game in. And by the way, this better freaking fix this game. Okay, it's plugged in. Let me pull the interlock switch here. Okay. Okay, so the power supply's on. So I'm gonna take my meter here and we're just gonna test the five volts. Just make sure that that is indeed five volts. All right, so ground is here oh I got an AC hang on all right so we're at 5.1 which is just it's fine I'm just gonna turn it down just a little bit 
it, there's no load right now. There it is, 5.0. Now it's 5.013. Let's get, just turn it up just a hair. All right, so yeah, 5.035. So that's okay. All right, so I'm going to turn it off. Just make sure all the power goes away. I'm waiting for the LEDs to kind of fade on the power supply just to make sure the power is really off. Okay, so now we're going to plug our logic board in. And, and this is keyed here, okay, there's a blank spot here, so we'll go ahead and put that right here. And then there's also a key on the other plug. I believe this other plug is just for the coin door lights. Okay, so that's it. I don't really like how this looks. Hang on, we're kind of tangled up here. Okay. All right, so we're ready to test this out, guys. <laughs> Was and is the issue with my Robotron a power supply issue or is it a connector issue? Do we still have a problem when we turn the game on? <laughs> Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. It's on. Okay, let's go to the front. Please, please, please. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I think it's fixed. I think it's fixed. I think it's fixed. I think it's fixed. Is it fixed? Why does it still say that? Hmm. Oh. It's not, it seems to be stuck. Let's, let's reboot it again. Okay. So I lost all my settings, right? So, all right, let me... All right, I'm gonna set up the tripod. Let's play around. Actually, before we do that, let's test voltages at the board and all that. <sighs> and let's just see what kind of voltage drop we're getting. And we're gonna have to securely mount the uh, power supply as well. So what I wanna do real quick is, um, and also I suppose we could disconnect the old power supply completely right now because we don't need it, right? right now the old power supply is running it's got voltage in but nothing's coming out so all right let me let me turn this off okay and i'm gonna disconnect the old power supply completely so now it's just out of the equation and then um, i'm gonna turn the game back on make sure it still works So I don't have any coin door lights. Is that right or did my bulbs burn out? I believe the old power supply su supplied the coin door bulbs. We'll have to look at that. Actually, all right, I'm gonna, hang on, I wanna, I wanna just do a little experiment here. I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna... Where would the coin door bulb voltage come from? Did my coin door bulbs work before? <laughs> I don't even remember. They must have, right? Man. I just plugged the old power supply in. I wanna just take a look here to see if the coin door lights are on. No, they're not. Did my bulbs just burn out? The, by the way, the game's totally working. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna look at the coin door bulb thing here in a second. Game's off. Game's back on. So 
So when that zero goes there, the game boots. All right, so let's, let's just test the voltages really quick at the board, carefully. Um, I'm gonna try to grab the top right of one of these legs, okay? If you guys could see this. All right, so I'm just gonna grab ground over here and then take this top right. So it's 4.857, it's a little bit low at the board. I'm just gonna turn it up a hair. Four point nine three nine. Okay, so that's pretty good. So what I'm doing is I'm on the on the EEPROM chips and and the CPUs too. Usually, usually the top right leg is the five volts, and I usually just go for those. And so that right there was four point nine three zero five. So the voltage is good. Um, so that's great. I want to test the voltages at the coin door because I don't. Did my bulbs just burn out? So. I'm wondering what I should do right now. Should we, let's secure the um, power supply, I guess, right now. Let me get the brackets they, they included with that. So we'll just throw a screw into the bottom with this here. So we turn the game off again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, so if we want this thing standing up, and there's no real good way to do this, is there? I got to bend this bracket. So if I were to bend this bracket, <clears throat> like so, then we can just kind of screw the power supply with one screw to the bottom. I mean, I'm not like moving this game around. Teeny tiny little screws here. Alright. There's one. Well, I guess if this really fixes the issue. <laughs> and it's saving all my scores. I mean, I guess, why rebuild it? You know, five volts is five volts is five volts. I guess it's silly not to, to do what we're doing, right? I mean, it doesn't affect gameplay or anything. All right, so we'll just go like that, and I'll just throw a screw, one single screw to hold that in there. Let me grab my... Uh, my drill and a screw here. All right, I went to the I went to the garage and grabbed a screw here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, just throw one single screw in here. Again, I'm not really worried about this thing, you know, moving around because I'm not moving the game anytime soon here. So, all right, let's just throw this screw right here. drill mood so we get endless torque all right let's just back it off a little bit so it's not so springy okay that's cool and then uh, the wires here god I don't really feel like they're that sloppy 
Nothing's really bothering me here. Thing kind of wants to move a little bit. Let me see if I can just tighten it a hair more. There, now it's not moving left or right. It's kind of floating a little bit on the bracket, but it's not moving left or right, so it's fine. And then, as far as the way the wires look, they don't really bother me, to be honest. It still looks pretty neat in here. What do you guys think, huh? Oops. All right, so let's... Um, uh, I guess we'll button the game up and put it back in its hole, and I do want to test those coin door lights. Because I don't know if that's a bulb issue, or is that a voltage issue? I just want to see if we have that voltage up front. All right, uh, we're going to button it up and slide it back and, and, and test the uh, coin door voltages. Actually, before I put the back door on, I noticed the little, like, sheet thing fell off here. So this is the interboard wiring diagram. So it's interesting here, actually. Um, it shows all the voltages. Let's see. This. Okay, so 4J3 is coin door power. And that is on the new switching power supply adapter, okay? If you look right here, 4J3, um, it says coin door power, and it's negative 6.3 and 27 volts. I'm, is that for the uh, Mary Protect interlock? That's not for the, uh, the switch up there, is it? And if we look over here, okay, 6.3 volts. Oh, it's negative? That's weird. I don't know. All right, so the white and the yellow is 6.3 volts for the coin door bulbs. Maybe my coin door bulbs are just burnt out. I don't know. But let's just kind of staple this guy down here. <sighs> These staples are not going in very deep, are they? Maybe we can just kind of hammer them down just a little bit. Whatever, that's okay. It's on. All right, let's let's button this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the game into position. You guys want to watch me put the back door on? <laughs> I don't have the key for this, so it just kind of like stays on because the bottom one's hinged. It actually goes like this. Like so, game just went on. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna latch it and then just kind of put it in its hole, and then let's let's test the voltages on the coin door lights. All right, I got the game kind of back in its hole. I didn't commit all the way yet. I just actually want to check check these voltages. Did those coin door bulbs ever work on my game? I just don't remember. So it should be 6.3 volts there. So let's just kind of test them out real quick and see what we end up with. On your mark. Get set. I don't have any voltage here. All right. Huh. Has that always been the case with this game? I'm thoroughly confused. I feel like these coin door bulbs were working before. Yeah, I got no voltage going to these. Hmm. There's a bunch of random loose wires in here. All right, um, I guess we'll open the game back up and check those voltages back there. And because there, there's that one plug, okay, that's on that switching power supply that I, I guess is for the coin doors bulbs. I, it's probably five volts that it's sending up there. So let's double check that. I'm gonna just pull the game back out again, ugh. 
All right, I got the game back open. The game's on. So what's interesting to me is this right here. I just want to be able to see the coin door I'm doing this. Um, so it's yellow and white, I believe, is the coin door. So let's just kind of probe in here and see what we're getting. Uh, I gotta think about this here. So it's connector J3. Let's look at that wiring diagram. Okay, so let's look here. So J3. So yellow and white and yellow should be negative 6.3. And then, oh, the ground is over here. I got it. Okay, so, so six is ground, black and orange is ground, and then it's 27 and 6.3 should be over there. All right, let's try again. We didn't grab ground correctly. So ground's over here. All right, so I'm grabbing ground right here, and then over here, I got 5.1 volts. Okay. So according to this, we have five volts going to the coin door, but five volts is not at the coin door. And has that problem always existed on my game, or is this something new? So yellow and white are leaving here, okay, with five volts to the coin door. And then if I go up front to the coin door, the wires that are going to the coin door are to the bulbs are yellow and white. So let me double check again. Yeah, I don't have five volts getting here though. Really bizarre. So where is the voltage not, where, where is it leaving? Where, where is it disconnected? This was not going to be part of this video, by the way. This little tangent I'm going on right now. Uh, so yellow and white. They're going up here. They're going through here. And then they're just going to the front. So is the problem in my cabinet wiring somewhere? Hmm. Just curious what that red wire is. The red wire was supposed to be 27 volts, and, and obviously it can't be. Yeah, the, the red wire's not even hooked up. All right, well, the yellow and white are, though, and there's five volts getting to them. Just one of those little stupid little tiny things that's gonna drive me crazy though. Because it's like, where is the voltage going? So if we kind of come down in here and just kind of scope things out. I'm just looking around here. Yellow and white. So the yellow and white wires are coming up through here. They're staying in the bundle. I see them in there. And then they're basically just getting to that Molex over there. Is it possible that this is just not in all the way? Is the game on you? Very strange. I kind of want to disconnect that Molex to see if the if the voltage is here still. Because it looks like the, the wires, the five five volts is coming up here, up in here, yellow and white. 
It's actually just the yellow or the yellow and the white. Or no, white with yellow. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's solid yellow and then white with yellow. So... It comes up here. It's right here. And then, does it turn? No, it keeps going here. It's right here. Yeah, this continues on to that Molex up there. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close the game up. We're gonna put it against the wall, okay? Because I, I, as far as I can tell, we're done back here, okay? Because the voltages are coming out of the power supply. Uh, they're coming up these wires. I, I think we might have an issue with the coin door, and I don't know if we're gonna even address that today. I was not even thinking about that till now. So I'm gonna button the game up, put it against the wall. Let's put the right settings on. We'll screw around with the coin door lights a little bit more right now just to see what we can find. But for now, I'm gonna put the game back in its hole and, and then we'll go from there. Ugh. All right, guys, um, got it back in the hole here. I'm, I'm starting to think about this coin door light thing. I don't think I ever got those coin door lights working. I, I think that this has been on my list since day one when I got this game. And I'm looking at the wiring here. I don't think they put a ground on this. I think that the yellow white and the yellow wire are both five volts. Now, one needs to be a ground. And if I'm looking at this, there's all kinds of extra wires bundled up here. I think someone rewired this. I don't think that's all original in there. And I'm starting to think if I ever had the coin door lights working on this game. So I bet you if I come in here and uh, if I come in here right now, and if we were to start testing voltages, okay? Um, so I got it on, on uh, DC volts here. And I don't know if you guys could see that. Okay, so right now I got yellow and yellow and white. Well, and I'm getting nothing. Well, why, of course I'm getting nothing. I, I need to have one on ground. Let me see if I can grab ground somewhere. Yeah, look it. There's two 5 volt wires on here. What the heck? So if I take this one off and I put this on here, look at that. This is wired wrong. What is going on? So if I take this ground right here from, from that little, and then just remove one of these, Right, and then put this ground up here. Look it. That's all it was. Someone wired this coin door wrong. Now I got these two five volt wires just kind of hanging out here, by the way. I gotta. Let's put this yellow on here. All right. So I want to get some electrical tape and just kind of get this out of the way or maybe we'll zip strip it right here. So that's all it was. Someone wired this thing wrong and I don't really know the history of this, but you could see that they put some kind of new harness in here. All right, I'm gonna grab some electrical tape and just kind of tape off these things so they don't short or anything. Wow. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna throw some of this gaffer tape on here. Just so it doesn't short anything out. This is kind of ugly. Alright, well, we fixed the coin door lights. And that was easy. <laughs> you know why I knew what to do? Because we read that wiring diagram. <laughs> I'm glad we did that on the back of the uh, on the back of that uh, back door. Okay, so this is 5 volts right here, too. Just hanging out. Alright. Nothing can short now. Okay, so we got our coin door bulbs working. That's a kind of a little bonus I wasn't expecting today. And uh, we got to put our settings back, back on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it, the game in test. So on, on the coin door here, there's just this little switch here. I gotta, okay, right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and just see if we can 
do this, the free play settings and all that. Okay, extra men. Hmm. So pricing, free play. So I'm gonna leave all the other default settings. I know that there's very specific Twin Galaxy settings. Should I go look those up really quick? Because there's something about these settings where you don't want default though. Extra men every 25,000, turns per player, um, fancy attract, typically a play, liberal. Like maybe it's this one you change, recommended. Restore factory settings. Let me go, let me go look this up real quick. All right, so I went on Twin Galaxies here and they have a bunch of different settings. So we're gonna go with, they have tournament settings and they have marathon settings. I'm gonna go with the marathon, which is extra man every 25,000 points, turns per player three, um, high score to date, yes. Difficulty of play five, okay, we got that. Letters for high score three. Okay, so I, I have that. Those, those are the, the marathon settings. Now the tournament settings, if, if we wanted to do those, the settings for that are, um, let me see if we could pull those up. The tournament settings are extra man every none. You get five lives and dig, that's it. You only get five lives. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that would not be very fun. So, all right. Okay, so that's that. Advanced to exit. All right, so it should be on free play now. Let's split. You want to play some Robotron? <laughs> Alright, here we go. I'm gonna start a game. Ah, oh, it's back. This really is uh, one of the greatest arcade games ever. Like, I, I mean, like, ever, ever, ever. Like, there's just no question about it. So you want to get all the people before you exit the level. And you gotta kill those stupid ring things. And I just never really got good at this game, but I like it. So you gotta get rid of those stupid witch things, like, oh, they will just make your life hell. Alright, so here's where you get some big points, because the point values of these women go up, like, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and they cap out at 5,000, or actually, I guess it's not just women, it's the little boy, too. And they'll turn those girls into zombies. Oh my god. But it's such a great game. I mean, you know, the twin stick shooter. I mean, they perfected it in this game. Not the first, but definitely the first really good one. You know, uh, Space Dungeon was probably first by Taito. And I like Spice Space uh, Dungeon, but this game is just way better. More playable, but I would definitely get a Space Dungeon. No doubt about it. All right, this is where it gets really bad. All those little squares are about to turn into tanks that will just ruin our life. Ah! You guys want to play again? You know, what I do want to do, though, is I want to turn the game off and see if it saves the settings. Um, because supposedly you can get these... The, the RAM get, can get corrupted uh, because we, we lost a big capacitor, I guess. Uh, but... I don't know, man. I got a lot of emails from people saying that this works really well. All right, I'm going to unplug the game. I'm going to come up here and just unplug it. All right, so the game's off, and we're just going to wait like about five seconds, and I'll plug it back in. So did it save the settings? Did it keep our free play settings? Did it keep my high score? Um, I mean, there is a battery on there that backs up the RAM, so who knows? Let's see what happens. All right. I think we're going to be okay, actually. Alright, yeah, it looks like it totally kept the settings. 
All right, well, hey, so far so good. All-time heroes number one, John. So that power supply so far is a success. And I guess I'm probably not going to rebuild the old one. <laughs> right? Come on. Should I? There's, I don't think there's a need. I, you know what? We got to move on. We got to fix other stuff. And by the way, when I got this game, um, it didn't have the right Wicos on it, and I, I ended up getting them from JR. I don't remember where I got them, but and I spent a lot of time dialing in those switches. Oh my God, your, your joysticks got to be—they got to be spot on in this game. You got to really take the time to get those joysticks right. And it feels so great with the Wicko leaf switches. Very fluid. Almost like an analog stick or something. So guys, today, um, it was very warm. Like, really warm. And, uh, I went outside after being kind of lazy this morning watching TV, and uh, I couldn't believe how warm it was out there. I'm like, whoa! It's garage time, isn't it? <laughs> so, I think we're going to be in that garage before we know it. Alright, well, you know what? We're going to stop. I feel good about this. What do you guys think, huh? I think we totally did it. And we fixed the coin door lights. <laughs> that someone did wrong. Look at that, huh? All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna print some viewer mail and then we'll hang out uh, for a little bit. What do you guys think, huh? All right, now you go print some mail and we'll go to the table. All right, let's do some viewer mail. And yeah, Robotron is fixed, which means that we fixed one third <laughs> of our broken games in this video. And, and yeah, iRobot now and Firefox are the only games down. And we'll be tackling those over the next few weeks here. It's funny, though, that iRobot, Firefox, same cabinet, both by Atari, both down. Ugh. Anyway, let's do some viewer mail. And by the way, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you need to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. It could be a question. It could be a comment. It could be anything. Email them to me, john at johnsarcade.com. In the subject line, put whatever. All right, first one here is from Elementix. Uh, hey, John, big fan. Uh, just wanted to shoot you an email about my color-matched NBA Fast Break LED swap I just finished. It took a few hours, but check out the results. Uh, and yeah, actually, let, let's show the before and after photos here. So yeah, dude, that looks like really good. <laughs> it looks amazing, like, like, a, like a brand new game. And I've thought about this a lot, you know, putting LEDs in my games, especially NBA Fast Break. But going on, he says, I picked this game up after watching one of your videos where you raved about it, and I can honestly say that I love it. It's so much fun. Anyways, what do you think? I think it looks good, dude. It looks like uh, it's time. Uh, it looks like it's time for you to pull yours out of the hangar for a day or two to show it some love. I wonder if it would attract more customers. I don't think you've done a video on an incandescent LED swap, so it'd be a cool video to watch. If I can finish my Excel sheet for the LEDs I bought for Comet Pinball, I'll shoot it your way. It was roughly two hundred dollars or so, so but I bought an extra bag of LEDs to have on hand. Anyway, keep with the good work and I'll see you at Southern Fried Game Room Expo. Yeah, I'll be speaking at Southern Fried Game Room Expo. It's like June 11th or 12th uh, down in Atlanta. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, I'll be speaking and hanging out, so be sure to say hi if you see me. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, I, I would like to do LEDs, and especially on NBA Fast Break. I'll tell you though, I did buy LEDs for Bronco. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of LEDs for that, so We'll, we'll be doing that if we ever get to that project, for God's sakes. But anyway, yeah, uh, I would like to do this. I wonder if NBA Fast Break would earn better at the hangar. I have no idea. Um, it, you know, NBA Fast Break does pretty well on its own, I think just because it's pinball. But, I mean, Ghostbusters, just, it pretty much destroys it. But NBA gets a lot of love, though. I wonder, if, though, if it looked more modern with the LEDs, if it would, it would make more money. I have no idea.
And also, speaking of the hanger, I've had a lot of people asking me, like, how come, I'm, how come I'm not doing any more hanger videos? And there's really no reason for it. Actually, I am posting unlisted videos. Uh, like, if I'm at the hangar and I fix something, or if I'm with Jay and I think something's cool or whatever, I'll pull out my phone, do a quick, like, one, two, three minute video, and then I'll post that to Facebook or my Twitter page, and they're basically unlisted YouTube videos. So if you want to keep up with the hanger stuff, Definitely follow me on Facebook at John's Arcade or on Twitter at BLKDOG7. And then we'll be doing more like, you know, hangar videos uh, probably in the summer more. I don't know. We're, 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 we'll kind of just like leave the garage and, and go check on things. Uh, I, you know, this winter here, it just been kind of busy trying to get in and get out and get stuff fixed kind of a thing and get back home and haven't really been doing a lot of videos there at all except for the unlisted ones and then jay and i also are opening a second location in westfield mass and we'll probably be documenting that maybe the next video i i don't know so anyway moving on this one's from trey hey john thanks for the help i'm actually about to buy two arcade machines and i'm planning on fixing them and putting them in some stores and other places how do you make your profit? Uh, do you do like a 40, 50%? Uh, if you can't say on video, it's okay. I'm looking at, at buying a storming party. Is that a cool machine? Does Pac-Man do good at the pub? Thanks. Uh, so Trey here is, thinks, is thinking about buying some arcade games, putting them on location. Um, typically, uh, operator and location relationships are percentage-based, you know, where you know, the, 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 the laundromat or the convenience store gets a percentage uh, of the quarters and then the operator gets a percentage of the quarters. So obviously you want to negotiate your best deal. Um, I think 50 to 50 is probably the most common where everyone takes half the quarters. Um, uh, Pac-Man does very well, you know, for a classic arcade game. Um, I'll tell you this, just from experience at the hangar, is that the iconic stuff is what people want to play, especially when it comes to classics. You know, looking around this arcade here, uh, you know, like Mad Planets would not do well. <laughs> you know, Quantum would not do well. Firefox, maybe. Nah, probably not. Donkey Kong does pretty well. Uh, Junior does not. Uh, Two Tigers would not earn a cent at the hangar. <laughs> Revenge for Mars would do probably good. Frogger does actually really well. Very steady. Uh, Miss Pac-Man, very steady. Uh, Pole Position is probably our best classic uh, game. Uh, so driving games, shooting games, uh, pinball machines, and the super, 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 super iconic games are what do well. Okay, The games that you and I like as collectors, nope. The people, the general public wants nothing to do with them. So anyway, uh, Trey, I encourage you to do this, man. I, I don't know what Storming Party is, um, but I encourage you to try it, man. W why not? What's what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> uh, let's see. The next one here uh, is from Harold. Actually, this one I'll, I'll read really quick. This is from Shane. Uh, he wanted me to mention this uh, fundraiser. Uh, hey, John, I love your, watching your videos. I wanted to pass along a story about a group of third graders in Paris, Kentucky. Paris is a town of about 10,000 people, and the kids have nothing to do in this town for fun. They got together with their teachers and decided to make a cardboard arcade at their school. They raised over $1,000 in a night and have since decided that they want to see a real arcade in town. All the info is in the link below. Uh, I have 22 arcade machines and would like to help these kids out. I'm working with them, the teachers, and the city manager to make it this reality. There's a Kickstarter that has been started to help get this project uh, over the finish line. Any help for these kids would be appreciated. The campaign is all or nothing, so we need to hit the $12,000 mark to get it done. Uh, it has been going for about 45 hours, and it's 5% funded. Uh, so if you guys are interested in helping these kids out uh, in Paris, Kentucky, uh, go on Kickstarter and search for Replay Arcade and Soda Bar, okay? Replay Arcade and Soda Bar. If you guys want to help out these third graders, uh, open an arcade in this little town in Kentucky, go to Kickstarter and, and fund it. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. So this is, how would I print? Four here, yeah. Uh, this one's from Harold. Uh, hey, John. Man, what a great channel you have. I love your collection of games. As a teenager, I played a lot of them, especially the track and field, the Ghosts and Goblins, Bomb Jack and Popeye, and of course Donkey Kong. These games costed me a bunch of quarters. But okay, it's in the best movie trilogy ever, Back to the Future 2. They had a cabinet with the game Wild Gunman. From the looks, it's a Nintendo cabinet, but there's little to no information to be found on the web uh, and Clove. Have you ever seen one? Was it ever available in a Nintendo cabinet or is it maybe just a movie prop? Thanks, John. Greetings from Harry from the Netherlands. All right, so I am familiar with this. Actually, let me show you here, right here. 
All right, so here's the, the image from Back to the Future. Now, I'm familiar with this a lot, and uh, actually, I always thought that that cabinet in that movie was a punch-out cabinet. It's very tall, much taller than a, a dedicated Nintendo-verse cabinet. It, it could be scratch-built altogether, but to me, it does not look like a nintendo versus cabinet. It looks like a punch-out, but even that might be wrong. Uh, Wild Gunman is, an, is a Nintendo game. I mean, it's a real game, but it was on the NES, not in the arcade. It wasn't a Nintendo versus game, and it was not a play choice game. So uh, they just made that for the movie. And I guess that they brought it back uh, on Back to the Future Day uh, on the Wii U. Yeah. Nintendo revised Wild Gunman in time for Back to the Future Day. So they, they brought it back to the Wii U, I guess. I, I don't know. How did you play that on the Wii U? It's a gun game. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that cabinet is fictional in the movie, so um, maybe it's got an NES in it. That that would be my guess. Uh, they just put a Nintendo game in there, so <laughs> yeah. But I, I do know people that have made their own Wild Gunman cabinets, and, and maybe they put an NES in there, so I don't know. Definitely a lot of people have shown interest, in, in, and also there's been a lot of posts or, or threads on Clov about that topic, but at the end of the day, Wild Gunman was not a Nintendo versus game, and it wasn't a play choice game, so I'm guessing that that game in the movie was a prop, and we had NES in there running the Wild Gunman game. I don't know, so pretty cool, though. I love Back to the Future, by the way. All of them. <laughs> so, so. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon. Now, listen. I did not do John's Kitchen. I'm well aware of this. <laughs> because John Kitchen, uh, April 1st rather, landed on a freaking Saturday and it just screwed me up completely. I, I just couldn't get the video out. Uh, you know, I, I, I've done three videos in the last week here, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> I wasn't able to fit the fourth one in and have it come out on Saturday. It just didn't work. Uh, but I still want to do the John's Kitchen for this year. So maybe it'll show up randomly on the channel over the next few weeks, okay? That's all I can say. <laughs> because I still want to do John's Kitchen this year. I guess if it, if it doesn't come out on April 1st, who cares, right? It's still John's Kitchen. So anyway, all right, guys, that's it. I'll see you very soon. Uh, uh, be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. We have an app on the iOS store and also on Google Play. Search for Video Game Outsiders. And that's it. Um, I guess just send viewer mail to john at johnsarcade.com. All right, guys, I'll see you very soon. And my God, I'm happy. <laughs> One third of the broken games are fixed. Robotron is looking good over there. And I am not rebuilding that power supply. I'm moving out with my life. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you very soon. Later and bye. <laughs>